Hey, it's James here from goodguitarist.com and welcome back to 30 Days of Guitar. Today is day nine and we are going to finally start adding some upstrokes to our strumming. Yesterday, we laid out the foundation for this by learning to count with subdivisions where instead of going one, two, three, four, we count one and two and three and four and. And now I wanna connect that to the mechanics of strumming. You know, so we, we did the internal rhythm thing. Now we're going to take that and express it on guitar with some strumming. Before we get started, make sure that you download my free ebook. It's completely free for all my subscribers. There's a link in the corner. It has, you know, it's a printable thing that has everything that we're covering and a ton more. We're up to like 41 or 42 pages last time I checked. And, you know, it's all stuff that people want to see when they're getting started and, and all the fundamentals. So please check that out. Also, if you enjoy learning with me, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps me with that whole YouTube algorithm thing. You know, uh, I don't like it. I hate being like, Boo, like and subscribe, but like, you know, that's the, that's the path that we're on right now to onto our lesson here. We're going to now add some upstrokes. And before we add the counting and all that, I want to just make it sound good. Remember when we were learning to do downstrokes and learning to hold a pick way back in like on day two, we had to angle our pick a little bit, you know, so that, and, and then we graze the strings, right? And we've been, we've had a lot of practice with downstrokes at this point. Now, when we go up, we want to change the angle the other way. So I'm letting the pick angle, I'm adjusting it as I do my down and up strokes. And I want you just on the open strings to do a downstroke and then angle your pick and do an upstroke. And I want you to just focus on the tone. Remember not to hold your pick too tight or else it's gonna sound abrasive. When your pick is loose, it kind of just naturally will do that thing where it angles itself. I'm not doing anything to adjust the angle. Notice when I stop strumming, my pick goes straight. And then as I strum, it angles itself. Another thing, is to let your wrist move. You know, now that we're doing upstrokes, we're gonna talk about the mechanics of strumming a little bit. Strumming doesn't come from your elbow. Obviously your elbow is moving and there's some motion coming from it, but there's more to it. There's also the rotation of your forearm. Well, that's another motion that's in there. Just a really subtle one. As I go down, it's like sweeps out. And as I come back up, it goes, you know, like that. And then there's your wrist making a little bit of motion. You know, it's, it's like a, compound motion from a few different sources. Your elbow is obviously providing the biggest motion, but your forearm is adding that flick, like you're flicking some water off the tip of your pick. You know, and your wrist is providing the stability. So just experiment with that, go down and up. You can even mute the strings if you don't want it to sound, you know, the neighbors to be like, what are you doing? Learn how to play some chords. <laughs> you know, just mute the strings. And just do that a whole bunch, just down and up. And that's a, a great exercise, you know, to open up with, especially warming up, like we talked about with the with the stair method for, you know, activating your fingers. Like that's great for, for getting your arm warmed up. Now that we uh, have the sound down, let's add some of that rhythm. Let's add some of that timing. There's a general rule that on the numbers, as you count, one, two, three, four, those are the downstrokes and the ands, those are the upstrokes. One and two and three and four and. And a great exercise is to simply mute your strings and do exactly what I what I just did. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And. If you want to take that a step further, we're going to alternate that with one and two and three and four and. So what I was doing there, I was doing a downstroke on one. And then as I said, and I lifted my arm with the beat, you know, so I'm getting used to keeping my arm moving even when I'm not strumming. One and two and three and four and. And when you watch anybody, playing guitar. You know, I, you can just go look up on YouTube, anybody, Bob Dylan, whoever you want to watch playing guitar, look at this part of their arm. You'll see throughout the entire song, no matter what pattern they're playing, it's always moving down and up. It's like a built-in metronome. And this, I call it continuous arm motion is 
one of the most essential skills and something that, you know, when uh, somebody's been playing guitar for a while and they're like, I'm having trouble, uh, you know, feeling the rhythm or, or whatever. It doesn't sound like the song. Continuous arm motion is one of the first things I check for and one of the first skills that we Im that we that we work towards, you know. So um, I want to spend some time doing that. And this exercise is the ultimate way to do it. We alternate between one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and down strokes only lifting your arm on the ands and four and and then all the strokes and two and three and four and and we could even turn on our metronome i'm going to do this at 60 beats per minute one and two and three and four and 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 one and two three and four and one and two and three and four and and that might be a little bit quick for you that's why i want you to do this at your own pace first get used to this to the motions you know and take the time to perfect those motions to count it at your own pace and the metronome is just a finishing touch you know because when you go to play along with songs or with other people that beat that the metronome provides that's going to be there in the air you know and you got to be able to latch on to that and that's what the metronome that's why that's like the final step to make sure you're getting it but before you do that you know rather than just trying to do it and failing and memorizing how to do it poorly i'd rather have you take the time to do it right now as far as a song that we can apply this to we're going to do that tomorrow i really want you to to spend that time working on the counting, incorporating it with the strumming, the smooth strumming. There's so much to work on here. You know, it seems simple, but there's so many little details. I really want you to focus on that before we get into learning any sort of song. Uh, the song that we're gonna do is called Songbird by Oasis, by the way, it's another two quarter. And uh, we're gonna learn a new chord shape for that. So we have quite a lot of stuff to take, take care of tomorrow, quite a lot of fun stuff. Otherwise, that's it for today. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out all those links to my free ebook, my complete beginner's course, all these resources designed to help you wherever you're at in your journey. Have a fun time practicing and I'll see you soon.